So in case you were wondering why this is important, because it matters to them. So purpose of healing images are how images heal. They get, in touch, get us in touch with ourselves so we can feel real, we matter, we can learn to know ourselves, and most importantly, love ourselves. They help us express difficult emotions, connect us to God, and create a sense of unity. Art helps us find our truth, remember play, enjoy the mystery, and live. Live with verve. Each of us has a deep desire to communicate our experiences so that others may know who we are, acknowledge our existence, validate our suffering, and celebrate our joys. And so in sharing, we may know ourselves. I painted this for someone that is very special and it really helped me just get in touch with that feeling for myself and then let it go. Art as medicine, in essence, is a visual representation of the soul's inherent striving towards balance and health. Art may be as close as we can come to seeing our souls. What's inside of yours? This, the little um, comment there on this page says, Inside it is colorful, outside is, it is white. Can I put my inside out? And I also just did this really briefly during an art therapy, one of my groups in Telluride. So that's a really great question that I ask myself constantly. So next up, I thought we would do a little neuroscience. So how does it work? Without getting too technical, scientists know that making art activates the relaxation response via the parasympathetic nervous system. This leads to release of cytokines, neurotransmitters, and endorphins, which results in enhancement of immune response, feelings of happiness, and improved blood circulation. Where in the brain is Carmen San Diego? So my favorite game when I was younger, um, Creativity is generally thought of as the generation of novel ideas that are useful and meaningful to the self or others. Novelty production is quite a mystery. It may occur spontaneously or deliberately in cognitive or emotional structures or areas of the brain. So I read several different really dense articles about this and it was hotly debated about you know, where creativity is in the brain, but it's very interesting so I thought I'd present what I could about it. So once an idea is conscious, we don't really know exactly where it's coming from, but once it shows up, uh, the prefrontal cortex evaluates the appropriateness of the thought and mobilizes higher cognitive functions, such as attention, memory, abstract thinking, et cetera, to manage and express the idea. Many researchers believe that creative insights occur in a brain state of defocused attention. So if you get distracted, or that's one of the reasons for the other hand, um, just doing things that can really allow your, your mind to let go. Others argue that creativity is a state that can be practiced, selected for, and explored consciously, which is possibly the case for professional jazz musicians. The temporal lobes are thought to play some role since individuals with temporal lobe epilepsy also often note increased creativity around the time of a seizure, and individuals with frontotemporal dementia often report heightened creativity after the onset of their disease. Some scientists postulate that perhaps the temporal lobe actually inhibits excessive idea generation and in decreased activity, such as after a seizure or in dementia, more ideas flow through. The corpus callosum is considered an integral part of creative processing. Despite the controversy about where creativity is located, which seems to be in many areas, it does seem clear that good communication between both hemispheres is essential. Some scientists suggest that the most creative people are those with the most balanced use of both of their hemispheres, which is activity facilitated by the corpus callosum. And there's a lot of research, especially uh, done with musicians, showing that they have a lot more, a lot bigger, thicker corpus callosums, and so that has suggested that this possibly is what's going on. It must, might also help explain why left-handed people are thought to be more creative, because they're 
may be more natural integration and ambidexterity. So the connection between mental illness and creativity. Many researchers have discussed the connection between creativity and mental illness. The view was apparently first put forward by Plato and later uh, by Emil Kraepelin, the German psychiatrist who gave us the distinction between manic depression and dementia, dementia precox, which later became schizophrenia. It's an area of controversy, but some studies suggest that up to 70% of highly creative people, musical performers, visual artists, and writers especially, have comorbid psychiatric disorders being mainly bipolar and depression. The rate of alcoholism and other drug use is also very high, 30 to 60% highest in poets and musicians. And I read a whole book on this called um, um, the it's on the previous slide. The Price of Greatness, Resolving the Creativity and Madness Controversy by Arnold Ludwig, who's a psychiatrist at Brown. It's very fascinating, and he goes into all the different reasons why this is thought to be. And I'll give a couple of them, but it's a fascinating book if you're interested. So some of the reasons why this is thought to be are um, creative people are much more likely to ruminate. They are very reflective. They think about things really deeply. They have a heightened sensitivity to their inner and the outer world. Some research suggests that naturally creative types delve more readily into their unconscious and shadow sides, pulling up deep and painful or rich and mysterious material. This may be due to an inherent sensitivity for or curiosity about emotional material, fantasy, and the unknown. And of course, taking oneself to the edge of your experiences puts you at much more risk of falling off. So, um, Why are creative people that way? This is also a little bit controversial and it's definitely multifactorial with genetics as well as environmental influences playing a large role. But creative people may literally be neurochemically wired to feel the need to ponder their experience and share what they find. So creative people, according to a research paper by Barron and Harrington in 1981, they have a couple of characteristics I thought I'd just report. They tend to follow intrinsic interests with passion and generally have less regard for extrinsic factors such as criticism, pressure for others, etc. They place a high value on the aesthetic qualities of life, have a tendency towards broad interests, an affinity for complexity, high energy, independence, intuition, self-confidence, the ability to tolerate conflicting traits in one's self-concept, and a solid sense of the self as creative. Are you creative? An interesting fact is that many of the creatively mentally, creative mentally ill interviewed through time were and are consciously using art and self-expression to help heal themselves. In others, it's probably still happening just unconscious. It's hard to separate the drive to create from the drive to heal. It seems that only an awareness of the benefit or purpose of the act of creation distinguishes the two. Okay, so the part you've all been waiting for. Not really more art. <laughs> um, I drew this in an airport when I was feeling kind of stressed one day. So I thought we would talk a little bit about data. And the truth is that there are a dearth of randomized controlled trials. There are lots and lots of kind of, I call them feel good reports. Um, there were reports with waitlist controls um, that weren't randomized or just um, case, case report type of things. Um, there were studies of art therapy, music therapy, poetry therapy, dance therapy, all kinds of different things. Um, and you might hypothesize that this is happening because um, people that are really creative don't tend to do as well with the structure and the numbers and all of that. So I think that they probably aren't as drawn to making randomized controlled trials, but it, more and more are starting to happen, so they're either collaborating or um, trying to integrate their hemispheres some more. 